Welcome to the Rocky Mountain Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as your facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first, you can use the Q&A feature to type your questions to our presenters at any point throughout our session today. Second, your camera and microphone are off so we cannot see or hear you. Third, this is just one of many different sessions we're offering. So feel free to visit that registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded. You'll have access to that recording within about a week or so. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter from Lewis and Clark College. Excellent, thank you. Um, thanks everyone for being here. Um, I hope you all can, can see my screen okay. Um, but my name is Joy Brown. I serve as a, a Senior Assistant Dean of Admission at Lewis and Clark College. Um, and I am excited to share a little bit about Lewis and Clark with you. Um, so Lewis and Clark, to, to start, uh, give you a, a brief overview. Um, Lewis and Clark is a private institution with a public conscience uh, and a residential campus with a large global reach. Um, our students and faculty pursue new ways of knowing uh, by combining classic liberal learning with collaboration. And our students represent a community of global thinkers and leaders uh, who are unafraid to discard conventional thinking and outmoded preconceptions. Uh, I'd say students are often drawn to the beauty of our natural setting on 137 wooded acres in Portland, Oregon. Our commitment to sustainability, rigorous academics, and the staggering percentage of our students who take part in one of our renowned study abroad programs. Uh, we have just under 2,000 undergraduates. Um, our average class size is 17, and we guarantee that you will graduate in four years, so much so that we will pay for that extra semester if you don't. And then all of our classes are taught by professors. Uh, no classes are taught by graduate students um, or TAs. One of the first words I always use to describe Lewis and Clark's academics is engaged. Um, students and faculty are committed to learning together in a collaborative environment um, in small classes where students are actively engaged in their learning. Um, so just how does a liberal arts education uh, prepare students for life after graduation? Um, and no matter whether our students are majoring or minoring in biology or international affairs or psychology uh, or entrepreneurship, they're learning strong communication skills, quantitative skills, uh, they're collaborating, they're exercising their creativity, they're becoming critical thinkers and problem solvers, um, which are exactly the type of skills that employers are looking for. Um, and our students come from all over the country and all over the world. Um, our students uh, come together and share an incredibly diverse array of perspectives and backgrounds, um, which is really important to us. And in addition to academics, I would say that all of our students are involved outside of the classroom, whether that's through different clubs and organizations, maybe it's our division three sports or club and intramural sports or our renowned ultimate Frisbee team, um, but also in the local community in Portland. We are lucky to be located in the green, quirky, delicious, wonderful city of Portland. Um, many of our students and alumni describe it as the best of both worlds. Um, we have a beautiful forested residential campus in a quiet neighborhood next to a state park, um, but then just six miles away is downtown Portland and all that it has to offer. Concerts, events, great food, um, food trucks, a vibrant art scene, um, but it also means that our students have ready access to internships, um, over half of our students engage in some type of internship during their time at Lewis and Clark. Um, and it's really easy to get around and to get from our campus to downtown. We have a free shuttle. Um, Portland has great public transportation. Um, it's also very bike friendly. I'd say a lot of our students bike um, or utilize zip cars. Um, our students also have incredible access to outdoors opportunities. Um, right next door to campus, we have Tryon Creek State Park, um, which personally is one of my favorite places to go trail running or hiking. 
And then our renowned College Outdoors program um, provides all sorts of countless opportunities uh, to explore and learn about the natural environment of the Pacific Northwest. Um, I'd say our students absolutely take advantage of our close proximity to the Columbia River Gorge, Mount Hood, um, and the beautiful Oregon coast. Uh, one of the most unique, unique aspects of Lewis and Clark um, is that we've embraced a global perspective um, to an extent that you rarely see at colleges in the U.S. Um, so many of our alumni reflect on their study abroad experiences and describe them as truly transformative. Um, and study abroad, no matter where you go, can impact your academic direction, your career focus, your life, um, as you learn so much about the world and about yourself by immersing yourself in a different culture for a semester or a year. Um, so if you haven't seriously considered studying abroad while you're in college, I would encourage you to do so. Um, so if you do end up applying to Lewis and Clark, um, there are really three important things for you to remember in addition to what's on the screen here. Um, November 1st is our um, deadline for both er, uh, non-binding early action and binding early decision. January 15th is our regular decision deadline. Um, we have been test optional since 1991 and we're still test optional. So uh, that means you do not need to submit SAT or ACT scores period. Um, and then lastly, admissions interviews are recommended for seniors who are planning to apply. Um, these will become available starting at the end of May for rising seniors. Um, additionally, I'll add that over 90% of our students receive financial aid. All students are automatically considered for our generous merit-based scholarships that range from 15,000 a year um, up to full tuition. Uh, and to be considered for need-based aid, you just need to file the FAFSA. And then lastly, I'll say that myself and my colleagues are thrilled to have the opportunity to work with you um, as you explore and apply to Lewis and Clark. So I'd encourage you to find your admissions counselor at the link here on the screen. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm joining you here in the Willamette Valley in the town of McMinnville on a beautiful sunny day. Um, so yeah, I'm here to share with you a little bit about Linfield University. Um, so here we go. So Linfield, we are located in McMinnville, Oregon. We're actually in the kind of like the Willamette Valley. The region is best described as like Oregon wine country, super lush. But we're actually super close to Portland as well, about 40 minutes. Coming from Southern California myself, 40 minutes, uh, not too shabby, 40, 45 ish. Uh, we are located on a 189 acre campus that is predominantly residential as well. We are a private liberal arts institution. Um, so, a little bit of a breakdown of our student body right there about 1,400 students. Um, really cozy feel. On average, our student to professor ratio is about 11 to 1. One really proud fact that we had was last year, our incoming freshman class was about 34% students of color and about 30% first generation. So we really are dedicated to um, a community of diversity and inclusion here at Linfield. Linfield is home to about 43 majors and minors, um, multiple minors, and we are separated into the College of Arts and Sciences and the School of Business. Um, most popular ones located kind of on that slide, nursing, psychology, education, exercise science, and biology. Um, we also have a nursing campus of which I'll get into in a little bit, but one really, really cool thing that I love about Linfield is over 90% of our professors here at Linfield have their terminal degrees or their PhD, um, and all of our classes are taught by professors themselves, so you're really getting a unique opportunity with such wonderful faculty that have chosen to come to our little neck of the woods. Linfield is home to one of the oldest nursing schools in the Pacific Northwest. Our nursing program is quite unique because you actually apply to Linfield, just the university itself, and then you'll spend two years here on our McMinnville campus. And after completing two years of prerequisites um, and you have satisfactorily met all requirements, it is a priority transition up to our Northeast Portland campus um, that's dedicated just to nursing and it opened this past spring. So uh, definitely if you're interested in nursing, our nurses 
are highly sought after. The ed click pass rate last year was over 90% on the first try. So one really unique thing about Linfield, I feel, um, is that when it comes to a private liberal arts and sciences-based education, it's something that we're really dedicated to. to. Um, students, rather than saying you have to take class X, Y, Z, we actually tell students, you know, these are a list of things we really want you to be able to achieve and accomplish. Um, and these are the basic thematic elements throughout underneath all of these themes that you see here. You can actually have the choice to um, take classes uh, from a list of like 30 in a lot of different interdisciplinary fields. So exploration is very important to us. And we really want students to be able to explore. So by the time you reach your sophomore year, um, you're ready to fully declare your major and, and be confident in that choice. Research is another big part of you know, exploring and, and finding out who you are. I just got off a Zoom call actually with our environmental studies professors and they had been talking about some research projects that some of their students had been doing in Hawaii regarding coral reef and fisheries and a, a lot of other um, research-based projects up in the Portland area. So research is very, very important to students and. I think for students that are interested in getting their hands really into research, that's something that's available to them right in their freshman year. Study abroad is also something we really, really value here at Linfield. Um, one big thing is that we, pr we provide the first round trip airfare for any student to study abroad um, for the first time. So whether you want to go uh, to Australia or Chile to learn about environmentalism, um, we will pay for your first round trip airfare to bring you to, to send you there and to bring you back home. Um, we are a predominantly residential campus with um, about 75% of our students living here. So this is really home for a lot of our students. So a lot of campus activities, clubs and organizations. Um, I kind of, it's kind of funny in college really or university, as long as you have like three friends and a, a faculty advisor, you're really able to explore whatever interests that you have. So whether it's one that we have here on our campus, you know fraternity and sorority life, our clubs, or something you want to bring new to, the, to our institution, um, there's lots to explore. Again, we are a predominantly residential campus, so home is uh, pretty cozy here. We are one of the first universities in the nation to offer a pet-friendly dorm as well, so if you wanted to bring a dog, you most definitely could. Um, so that's a little picture of our, our dorms that we have here, so we're quite cozy. We are NCAA Division III, and that's the list of all the sports that we have. If you're interested, I highly recommend interested students looking at our athletic page and reaching out to any of the athletic staff. We are part of the Common Application Coalition, so if you are interested, um, you know, many of my peer institutions listed here are part of that as well. Uh, we do not require test scores. Previously, Linfield was test optional for a very long time, but now we are test uh, no test scores for this year and next year, and, and we've always never had an application fee. So those are some of our deadlines. Um, and just little snippets of our financial aid right there. On average, 99% of our students are receiving a financial aid package of around $40,000. Um, we are actually allowing students to come and visit campus. So if you'd like to come and visit, you know, be here in person to see uh, right now. Actually, that flowering picture is happening right now. So if you want to come down here and visit us, please feel free to. You can schedule online vis online to visit a, the campus and, and kind of tour around. We are heading into our quieter season, but still lovely to visit in the fall or spring rather. So thank you very much. Oh, geez. <laughs> can y'all see my screen? We can. Okay. Sorry, I don't know why. There we go. Okay. <laughs> it's like I can't see myself. Well, welcome everyone. My name is Stephanie Chi and I'm an admission counselor here at Willamette University. My hope is in the, the next few minutes, my presentation will inspire you to want to spend more time with us through a more in-depth virtual visit, which we are currently offering daily. Um, Willamette University is located in Salem, Oregon, which is the state capital and the heart of the beautiful Willamette Valley. We are a liberal arts college supported by graduate programs in business, law, theology, and soon to be arts given our merger with the Pacific Northwest College of Arts. 
We're located in the part of the country that I saw after for its natural beauty, diverse ecosystem, outdoor opportunities, and many places for you to explore. Willamette has established, um, was established as the first university in the Western United States. It was actually founded before Oregon was even considered a state. Willamette began to educate and shape innovative leaders right from the beginning, including our very first graduate, Emily York. I mention our history because it's very important to understand Willamette's rich heritage in order to understand who we are as an institution now. Willamette's legacy of leadership and impact in the community is exactly what current Willamette students find here today. We are a place that takes knowledge and turns it into action. Willamette's motto grounds the Willamette experience in a very real way. The motto, not unto ourselves alone are we born, sums up what those early alumni knew from their time at Willamette. We are in the world together and our education should be a time when we practice and explore the world um, and how that impacts each other. We talk about the motto a lot and continuously challenge ourselves to live it in a new and varied ways. Um, Willamette focuses on providing students both in and out of the classroom to practice this idea of the motto of making positive changes through leadership, service, and innovation. In the classroom, Willamette students meet in small groups where highly engaged faculty lead primarily experiential based classes. Small group interact and classes are designed to help students develop the important skills that see them through their lives and careers. Skills like critical thinking, creative problem solving, and the ability to consider varied perspectives. Our faculty are accomplished scholars. They research, write, and publish extensively, but first and foremost, they are teachers. Willamette faculty serve as mentors, helping students really learn to learn so they can grow and change as the world around them changes. It's no wonder Willamette has more Oregon Professor of the Year than any other college in the state of Oregon by quite a margin. We feel strongly that the incredible classroom environment at Willamette is critically supported by experiential and co-curricular activities. Things like study abroad, hands-on research, and internships are interactive out-of-class experiences that all Willamette students participate in. Our unique location contributes significantly to our ability to provide these opportunities. So let me just tell you a little bit about our place in the world. <laughs> we are a um, we are an urban campus set in the center of Point Salem downtown corridor, where we are the only campus in the nation to be located directly across the street from the state capitol building. If you want to be exact, 76 feet away, <laughs> you can see um, and imagine the internship and research opportunities that abound for our students in every form, um, ranging from politics to economics, psychology and data science, simply because our proximity to and long relationship with state government. Also unique to our location is the positioning of Salem Health, one of, the, one of Oregon's largest hospitals, which is directly adjacent to campus. Our thriving pre-med program is well supported by our proximity to this medical resource. Well, Emmett is also known for our 305 acre outdoor learning laboratory called Xeno, where students can literally dig in the dirt of this unique region, restoring habitats, participating in forestry study, and even growing vegetables. Finally, Willamette is co-located with Tokyo International University of America. The American Studies program brings 100 Japanese students to live and learn with us here in Salem, Oregon each year. And this program is a great reminder of Willamette's strong commitment to all things international. We value the experiential learning that comes from the exchange students who share our campus, as well as the amazing opportunities that students find while participating in the 66 study abroad programs we offer. As you see, Willamette is physically located in such a way that you are literally are surrounded by opportunities for you as a student to extend your learning beyond campus. There's so much more I want to say, but before my six minutes are up, I just want to mention that Willamette uses a common application. We review applications holistically, and we've been fully test optional for several years. We never charge for an application fee. Um, because we wanna make sure that there isn't a barrier for any student seeking access to Willamette and every applicant is considered for our generous financial aid award. Willamette encourages applicants from bright, diverse and prepared students who wanna make an impact and interact with challenging ideas. If you wanna be part of the deep tradition and history that we have made, Willamette is a shaper of innovative leaders and I hope that you take time to learn more about us. 
Feel free to visit our website to explore our extensive virtual visit options, as well as our current in-person visit options, as well as don't hesitate to reach out to me as well. My contact information is on the slide. And as always, go Bearcats. Awesome. Hi, friends. Uh, my name is Dev DeVret. I am an assistant dean of admissions uh, over at Reed College. Reed College is a small private liberal arts college located in Portland, Oregon. We are actually in proper Portland. Um, we're in the southeast quadrant of Portland, um, just about 10 minutes away from downtown uh, city center. And we're an institution that has about 1,500 students um, hailing from uh, all 50 US states and 44 different countries. Um, we're in a pretty quiet residential area. There's a lot of houses uh, and apartments around us. There's even a rhododendron garden that's beautiful um, right across the street from us. Um, so pretty quiet area, but you get the entire benefit of the entire city of Portland and the surrounding metro area uh, because of our really uh, convenient location. Um, this is a campus where students come because they love to learn. This is a school where students challenge ideas and ask the tough questions uh, and really get a front row seat in their learning. We're known as one of the most rigorous institutions in the U.S. Um, and our class sizes uh, and class experience really speak for themselves. Uh, our average class size is about uh, ranges between 15 to 17 uh, with an average student to faculty ratio of nine to one. Um, and our classroom experience has actually been rated some of the best experiences in the country. Um, most of our classes are taught in what we call a conference style learning environment so you're you're not sitting in a room with it's like, that's an auditorium that has like 100 people in it you're sitting around in a room with uh, about 10 to 15 other folks you're sitting around a table the professor's not there to lecture at you and talk at you for two to three hours uh, but they're there to really guide the conversation and they really help you unpack the content and the material uh, if you're the kind of student that likes to participate in classes, um, if you're the kind of student that likes to uh, get into Wikipedia rabbit holes, if you're the kind of student that likes to debate, or if you're the kind of student that likes to um, share your thoughts and share your opinions, Reed is definitely the institution uh, for you. This idea of community is something that we really value at Reed. Um, you see that there in the classroom experience where um, it is really heavily embedded, embedded in discussion uh, and in that uh, classroom community. Um, but community manifests itself in a variety of ways on campus. Um, you know, we have 90 different clubs and organizations on campus. The institution itself also plans uh, all kinds of events and activities for students um, to get out and have a great time. Um, yes, you're going to be studying and doing the homework and all the research. Um, that's not, uh, you know, you're definitely not missing on any of that opportunity. But what's also really cool is that we, we create these events and opportunities for students to, to put the books down every once in a while and, and get out and, and have a good time. Um, we have a really great outdoors program where we take students out on hiking trips and camping trips. Um, <clears throat> As a matter of fact, the college owns a cabin up on Mount Hood that students can access for free, um, just like checking out a, a library book. That same thing goes with all the equipment that you could ever need. If you're gonna go camping and you don't have a tent, you can check one out for free from the school. Um, you don't have any ski gear, you can check that out for free from the school. Um, so, you know, we're always trying to create these fun events and activities for students. If you're more of an indoor, indoorsy person like me, uh, because you know bugs exist in the world, um, then we've got things like paint nights and guest speakers. Um, we'll take students to film festivals or art galleries and really do our best to give you those opportunities uh, to explore Portland. Uh, yes, we do have a nuclear reactor on campus. Um, it's powerful enough to power, wait for it an entire microwave. Um, so it's a purely educational tool. Any student can become uh, trained in the nuclear reactor. Uh, you don't even have to be a STEM major. Uh, our lead uh, operators last year were history majors. Um, and so it's a great way to uh, uh, learn a new skill set um, and uh, utilize this tool that not only a lot of places uh, have access to. As a matter of fact, we produce the most female identified nuclear reactor operators out of any place in the entire world. Um, so definitely a really cool addition to have on campus. 
Um, just gonna wrap up here real quick and tell you uh, we have we have three different application rounds you can choose from. Uh, so we've got a uh, regular decision, early action and early decision. Uh, read is actually not test optional. We are test blind. So that means whether you take your test or not, whether you submit it or not, we're not looking at your test scores. Um, so you know, we're, we really value this idea of equity and inclusion, and we recognize that these standardized tests kind of add a little bit of layer of challenge to us students sometimes. Um, and so uh, we are currently test blind. And lastly, uh, we meet 100% demonstrated need for every single admitted student. That includes international, domestic, transfer, first year, does not matter. We do meet 100% demonstrated need for every single admitted student. Um, hopefully uh, this was beneficial and you got a lot of information. Uh, my contact information is right above my head, so feel free to reach out. Thanks so much. Hi everyone, I'm Maddie. I am one of the admissions counselors here at Pacific University. Um, also a school located in Oregon, so you're hearing all about the Pacific Northwest today. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something that's a little bit unique about Pacific throughout this presentation, but know that we genuinely want to hear from you. Um, I am the admissions counselor that gets to work with all of the students coming from kind of the Rocky Mountain area. So feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm actually going to put my information in the chat right now. Um, so feel free to email me, call me. Um, I want to get to know you. Uh, I am someone on campus that you can consider as your go-to. So let's talk a little bit about where Pacific is located. So we are up in Oregon. We are west of Portland. So we're about 30 minutes west of downtown Portland. Um, which really gives you this awesome kind of central location um, to not only the proximity to the large city where things are happening, you can get bubble tea with your friends on the weekend, but you're also going to have that proximity to the Oregon coast where you can get away, you can experience where you're going to go to school, right? So I came from Utah, uh, and when I moved to Oregon, this whole world opened up of green, lush land, and so it's exciting to have our students come here and have a chance to explore that even while they're on their way through the program and working through um, their degree here at Pacific. So at Pacific, we are a small school. We have about 1800 students. Um, you will get to know the professors teaching your classes. Um, you know, we expect you to know their name, but we also expect them to know your name. So this is actually uh, Professor Chan. She graduated from the University of Utah majored in dance and chemistry. These are the type of professors that you're going to have teaching your classes, getting to know you, encouraging you to have multiple interests, right? So this is a list of the 65 different areas of study that you can explore at Pacific. Everything from, you know, those pre-professional tracks like pre-med, um, but we also have film and video. Um, we do have um, a really awesome business program, a really great education program. There's quite a few kind of quirky things that Pacific does well. And so when you're here at Pacific, we're going to ask you to do a little bit of everything, right? Let's say you want to go into those health professions. Well, I'm going to have you take a class in social equity and social change. So then you're aware of how healthcare is accessible to different populations. We're going to have you take a yoga class. And then you might be able to recommend that to your patients when you're meeting with them, right? Because you were able to take a class and saw how it impacted your health. So at Pacific, as long as you pick one thing on this list, by the end of your sophomore year, we can guarantee that you're going to graduate in four years. And that's really important because college is a time to explore, for you to try things out, see what you like, see what you don't like, right? So that's going to come in the shape of internships, job shadows, so many different names for them. Basically, get you out of the classroom and into those working environments before you even leave. And that's really important because I was pre-med, um, but I was a junior at another college and I finally saw the human cadaver. We have them at Pacific. And I was like, whoa, I can't do medical school, right? And I had to change my mind and find something else that I wanted to do. Well, that's so important when you're here. Usually our students at Pacific have between three to six different internships while they're here. That can start freshman year. 
it can start when you're a sophomore, junior, um, and you're excited and interested in different areas of study. So at Pacific, this is gonna be a part of your classes. It can also be something that you do during the summer when you maybe go home and are staying with family. So know that at Pacific, we're gonna encourage you to get out there and try it, um, but we're also gonna encourage you to do all the other things that make you who you are. So we have over 70 different clubs and organizations, you know, ranging from your academic interests to help you prepare to those things that you wanna meet new people while you're doing, right? So at Pacific, you can be on track with your academics and still have time to have friends, to go to our sporting events, to take a nap, to explore Forest Grove and explore Oregon. So know at Pacific that you're gonna have chances to meet that community, those group of people um, that are gonna help you as you're kind of navigating the world and making those changes. So at Pacific, we do have some really great, awesome um, scholarship opportunities. The middle one I wanna tell you about are academic merit scholarships. 100% of our students receive these scholarships when they apply. And these are gonna be related to your hard work right now. So when you apply to Pacific, we're part of the common application. It's a free application. Um, and know that I'm gonna be reviewing your application. So really, truly, you can reach out at any point and connect with me, whether it's reviewing your essay before you send it in. Um, if you wanna to talk to me about other programs here at Pacific or the best place to get donuts in Portland, um, I'd love to connect with you um, and connect you with even more opportunities, open up that community for you to be a part of. So thank you so much for my, your time today. I've put my contact info in the chat um, and we look forward to having you signing up for any type of visit with us soon. Thanks. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Matthew Creasy, and I'm an admissions counselor here at the University of Colorado, Denver. And I'm so thrilled to share a little bit about our university with you today. So let's start with just a general overview of CU Denver. So CU Denver is actually the only urban public research institution located in the entire state of Colorado. And we're so lucky to be located directly in the heart of downtown Denver. Now, being in the midst of one of the most bustling cities in the entire United States brings so much energy to our campus, but it also brings so many opportunities to our students. Now, despite being in the midst of a bustling city like Denver, we are considered a small to medium sized university with only about 11,000 students here on campus during a regular non pandemic year, of course. But despite that, we still maintain average average class sizes of only 27 students per classroom and a student to faculty ratio of 17 to 1, meaning you're going to have so many great chances to meet with all of our wonderful faculty here at our university. We also offer over 140 different degree programs. Um, notably, we have degree programs uh, uh, located in the College of Architecture and Planning. In fact, our undergraduate architecture degree is the only undergraduate architecture program in the entire state. And we have a deep rooted partnership with the CU Anschutz Medical Campus, uh, located about 20 minutes away from our campus, which just so happens to be the largest medical health center in the Rocky Mountain region, making our pre health students some of the top in the entire country as they look uh, at, to getting into medical school. But all of our degree programs are broken down into all of these different schools and colleges. Unfortunately, we don't have time to highlight every single one of them today. But I do want to highlight the fact that regardless of what your interest might be for an academic major degree plan, you're absolutely able to uh, access more degrees throughout these other schools and colleges. So if you're interested in double majoring, majoring and minoring, majoring and double minoring, whatever it is that you might be interested in pursuing, we're going to be flexible in providing that for you. But life on campus is one of the best parts about being a student here at CU Denver. We have over 120 different 
student clubs and organizations ranging from traditional honors organizations that you might see on any university campus spread throughout the country to very specific niche student organizations based off of the particular interest of our student population. One of my favorites is actually our Paranormal Activity Club, where students go and hunt ghosts not only on our campus, but in the Denver metro area broadly. So I can assure you any type of community you might be interested in getting involved with likely already exists here at CU Denver, and they would be so thrilled to involve you in the work that they do. But that being said, we also offer various leadership opportunities like our Student Government Association, where students drive initiatives to increase the well-being of students both on and off campus. But these are not just ceremonial positions here. These are actually paid positions for our students. So if you want to cultivate a professional development and leadership skill set while also making some money and a flexible position on campus, campus, I highly encourage looking into our different leadership opportunities. But beyond that, we also offer uh, over 15 different competitive club sports, including a state championship winning powerlifting team and a national championship winning bicycling team, intramural sports, and an adventure desk space where you can rent out outdoor equipment like canoes and kayaks to go enjoy life in nature here in Colorado. Which, on the subject of enjoying life off campus, it's so important to highlight the fact that we are within walking distance of every major landmark in the city of Denver. For instance, our students get discounted ticket rates to Nuggets games, Rockies games, and Avalanche games. So if you are a student who's interested in looking at different sports uh, uh, games, for highly discounted rates. I enjoyed Nuggets Nights for only $15 as a student here at CU Denver, for instance. You're going to be able to access these different cultural opportunities very seamlessly on our campus. Now, a lot of students also ask us up front what they can expect costs to look like here at CU Denver. We like to be upfront with what estimated costs could look like because we were actually voted number 12 in the entire country for the least amount of post-graduation undergraduate student debt. And you can see that reflected in our annual costs there at the bottom of the slide. Uh, for in-state students, you can expect to pay less than $10,000 a semester here at CU, or pardon me, less than $10,000 a year here at CU Denver um, as a student, which makes us unbelievably affordable if that's a component to the education that you are looking for. We also offer two different dorm spaces on our campus, including a brand new residential hall called City Heights, which will be opening up in fall of 2021 for first year students. So if you are looking to move into a brand new dorm space, you're also going to have the opportunity to do that here as well. Now, in terms of next steps, you can apply to CU Denver either through our website or on the Common App itself. We will accept both, and that application will be completed by sending in a $50 application fee. If this is a barrier to entry, please get in contact with us and we'll be able to help you. And once you connect all of the other materials necessary for that application, we are on rolling admissions here, so we are able to convert a decision in two to three weeks. Now, that's all the time I have, so have a great rest of your day, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you to all of our panelists. This concludes the presentation portion of our session, but now we're gonna to transition to the Q&A. So our attendees, I encourage you, if you have any questions, feel free to use that Q&A feature and our panelists will respond. Also wanna encourage all of our panelists to return. Feel free to turn your cameras back on and I'm gonna pose a question to the group and you can respond in the order in which you present it. The first question, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Yeah, I would say um, take advantage of all the great virtual content that's out there right now. I'm sure you're all antsy to get off your couch and get onto our campuses and we are excited to have you hopefully soon. Um, but you honestly in a lot of ways can learn even more uh, from virtually interacting with us. Um, and this year has forced us to create a lot of virtual content. Um, so use that to your advantage um, in getting excited about applying to college. My piece of advice is, I know sometimes students get really caught up in kind of the chatter that's going out about, you know, friends going applying to this college, friends applying to that college. Sometimes that can cause a lot of confusion and maybe even some anxiety. Um, I really encourage you as your, no matter what grade you are, to kind of 
shut out the noise, shut out what everybody else is saying, and you know, attend programs like these where you can learn a little bit about the different institutions. There may be one little nugget where you can say, you know, I never thought about that before. That's something that's really interesting to me. Um, and then dig a little deeper uh, because really, you know, it's going to be home for at least four years, hopefully. So, um, you know, really as cheesy as it sounds, listen to what is in here. <laughs> Um, my piece of advice is just to reach out, send a quick little email. It doesn't need to be anything super lengthy to just get information. I would say this process is really mutual. We want to get to know you and you should have the opportunity to also get to know us. Not only should this campus be a great fit for you, but we also want to make sure that you will thrive here um, on our campus. So just reach out. We have plenty of opportunities for you to get connected with current students, faculty members, um, clubs, organizations, so you name it. So don't hesitate to just send a small email or a quick call. Um, yeah, to add to what my colleagues have said, I would say ask those tough questions. Um, ask your admissions counselors um, all those questions that you have. Don't be afraid to um, do some research and ask follow-up questions. I promise you're not bothering uh, any of us. Uh, we're all here uh, and we're all, we all love to chat with you. Trust me, we spend a lot of time looking at spreadsheets. If any of us could take a break from any of those spreadsheets for even a few minutes to talk to a living, breathing student, we will all do that. So um, you're not bothering us, ask us those questions. We're here to help. One piece of advice that I would give students is to think about what you do well. It's really hard to talk about yourself, right? It's awkward, it's uncomfortable, but you're going to have to do it in your applications and in your interviews with colleges. So um, talking with friends, talking with your grandparents, your parents and siblings, what do you do well? What are some things that you might be proud of? And then become comfortable about talking about those things, right? Because we're going to ask you those questions. Um, whether it's in an essay format or in a face-to-face -face format. So become comfortable with some of those things that you can feel confident in to really express yourself and show those accomplishments that you do have. We know you have them because we read about them. So just become comfortable with how to talk about them. Yeah, and uh, just to sort of close out the advice here, I always recommend that students try to develop communities early and often. Uh, and even as a prospective student, you have the opportunity to start cultivating communities on campuses you're interested in right now. For instance, there's going to be social communities like clubs and organizations, academic communities you'll be involved with, professional communities you'll be involved with. And it's so important to reflect on how those communities are going to impact your time uh, on campus as a student. So my advice is consider those communities. See if universities you're interested in provide communities that you know you're going to want to access. And then like all my colleagues said, ask those key questions to see if you can uh, get involved with those communities even now as a prospective student. You'd be amazed at how much uh, that will carry you through your time in university. Great advice. Thank you all for sharing. This concludes our college fair for today, but I have a few closing announcements. As you exit from the Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately four questions, but please complete the survey. It's extremely helpful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings in the future. Also wanna remind you to sign up for additional sessions by visiting that registration site. And finally, this recording will be available within about a week or so. I want to thank all of our amazing panelists for joining us, but also thank you to our attendees. I hope everyone has a great evening.